Hi all, this is Jan Almighty and welcome to this video. So today I'm going to show you a game between Michal Tal and Erwin Nivergeld. As I've previously mentioned, so two videos back, uh, Fischer did play in the 1959 tournament against Mr. Nivergeld here, and that Mr. Nivergeld actually stayed famous because of his game against Tal in this tournament. And that is just something that Tal did in his time, he uh, made people famous for losing against him. And uh, when he did it, he did it in a really good style, in a Tal style. So let me just show you this beauty of a Tal game. Uh, Tal starts with the white pieces, he plays e4, and Mr. Erwin Nivergeld, he, he plays c5. So we have the Sicilian. And the first couple of moves are pretty standard. Uh, we have the exchange on d4, of course, knight to f6, knight to c3, and now d6. Uh, here, Tal goes for bishop to g5, and we enter the Richter Rouser variation e6 and queen to d2. Now uh, there are a couple of moves you can play. Bishop to e7 is one of them, unpinning this knight, maybe even a6, going for the knight's exchange, maybe pushing b5 immediately, but here uh, Nivergeld plays a6 and makes Tal to decide immediately what to do with the bishop. If bishop to h4, then we go into the standard uh, uh, you could say trick uh, from black side where now this bishop isn't defended anymore by the queen and here black is just won a pawn. Uh, if you capture the knight then simply queen captures on h4 and if you don't if you go for the queen capture then there is actually no way how you can uh, keep the piece and even in some variations uh, black will even uh, uh, win the piece himself. But okay here no uh, but in the end uh, black is clearly better here. So uh, here Instead of going for bishop to h4, we see bishop to f6 immediately. Pawn captures on f6, and for those of you who don't know, uh, the Richter Rouser is a typical, this is a typical setup for the Richter Rouser. You have a doubled f pawn, open g file, and uh, probably black will go actually queenside castle, even though the c file is open. But uh, white does the same, queenside castle, and now we have a6. f4, uh, occupying the space in the center, and now bishop to d7 bishop to e2 and h5 so the idea is at some in some variations it would be very good to play it even sooner with bishop to h6 in mind but here f4 is already played uh, this diagonal could be messy if bishop comes here so king to b1 played by white definitely a good move queen to b6 pressuring the center and now knight to b3 keeping the knight as a defending piece Queenside castle. As I've mentioned, uh, the Richter Rouser variation for black is definitely go for the queen side. Rook from h to f1, and uh, one thing is um, uh, quite, uh, I would say, nice to see uh, that um, here at this moment we are at move 14, and both of the players have been playing uh, actually the best moves. So the top lines in the variation, and this could mean both. Uh, one thing that both of the players are really well prepared but at the same time as Tal being the uh, the definite favorite in this game that he will have a definite trouble how to actually go about attacking here Mr. Nivergeld. We see bishop to e7 played so not playing the bishop on this diagonal but here uh, keeping an eye on all of these pawns and now rook to f3. A rook lift keeping the rook flexible keeping it uh, possibly here or maybe even here we will see depending on the situation. Now rook from d to g8, and this is actually the first move that I actually didn't quite like. I mean, um, this is a definite decision, you want to keep your rooks on h and g file, uh, probably even attack with the rook here on this uh, file, but maybe h4 could have been a better move just occupying more space on the king side. But okay, nothing wrong with this move, and now bishop to f1 defending the pawn on g2. King to b8, and now rook to d3 having this nice little battery, but still you cannot uh, attack this pawn even more. You have to see how to actually approach this position because in the way you will just give up the rook for the bishop and the pawn. And in this situation, I wouldn't say that is the best of ideas. Bishop to c8, moving the bishop, uh, to, bishop to defend here, and now a3. h4, picking up space and queen to e1. And queen to e1 is a move that is played uh, with an idea of pressuring this pawn, but you will see actually now. Rook to g4, and here, this is uh, one of the key points in the game. Uh, what happened is that black is attacking now this pawn and possibly keeping pressure on uh, white pawns in the center. 
And what do you need to do here? Well, you can go about defending this pawn with queen to d2 or rook to f3, but uh, this would just mean that you have to play the move there on a position where the piece has already been. So the rook has been on f3, the queen has been on d2. And uh, Tal isn't a player that does that. So now is actually a moment to play a Tal move. And he does, knight to d5. And okay, uh, yeah, maybe it, it isn't... Uh, correct to say that this is a, actually a tall move because knight to d5 uh, is a pretty common move to play in a Sicilian, opening up the e-file and then starting the attack on the e7 bishop. And here uh, you need to capture because if you go about this, then knight to e7, queen to e7 and simply rook to d6, white is in a better position here, yeah, picking up this d6 pawn and going for the attack. So here we see captures, captures and now knight to e5 blocking the position this is the best move and after captures uh, black has uh yeah just made his pawn structure uh, a little bit better so uh tal did help a bit but uh, he did it with a reason he wants the attack knight to a5 now starting the attack with the knight bishop to d8 now attacking this knight twice and you don't want to bring the knight back once again this is tal we are talking about so knight to c6 and this is actually a great move because you cannot capture because of rook to b3. The, the queen is pinned and you will lose the queen here. So here uh, king to a8 is played and now rook to b3. As we can see Tal is uh, ready to start with the attacks. Queen to c7 moving out of the way and now not going for uh, knight to d8 or something like that but rook to c3. Still keeping the tension. And here actually uh, Nev Nivergal plays the right move which was pawn captures on c6. Uh, the, the piece sacrifice and now uh, we are in Tal's territory. Rook captures on c6, attacking the queen, and now the queen moves to b7. Uh, you could have captured with the bishop on a6, with the rook on a6, and both of those moves would be very good moves. But here Tal uh, once again surprises his opponent and plays a rook captures on d6, keeping uh, an option to capture on a6 later. But now um, what could have been played is queen to b8, attacking the rook and also uh, yeah, just uh, keeping the defense of this pawn with the bishop. When the rook comes back on c6 here, black can just continue with his game. Uh, but uh, we didn't see that, but rather rook to a4, uh, defending the pawn and also having ideas like rook captures on a3. So this is why rook to d3 was played. And uh, here, actually, queen to e5 was a much better move. Uh, going for the attack of this rook, so rook to a3 is impossible at the moment. And when you play, and you can't even play bishop to c7, because uh, rook to a6, uh, sorry, uh, because of bishop to a6. Uh, now the queen is attacked, if you capture, this comes with a check. And in the end, uh, yeah, recapturing, and um, this is a better position for white. Uh, if you don't do this, if you capture with the rook, then rook captures on a6 with check, queen to a6, and once again, queen captures on h8. So bishop to c7, pinning the bishop, uh, pinning the rook is impossible, uh, so you have to move the rook, for example, to g8, and then queen to c3 defends the spawn, and the attack continues. But here, rook to d3 was played uh, defending the spawn, and here, actually, Mr. Nivergelt was the one who had the chance to go for a better go for a better game, actually, with queen to e7. This rook is attacked, you have to move it somewhere. Rook to c6, and now bishop to b7. Just with two active moves, uh, now your bishop is coming alive, and where can you put this rook? If you put it on c3, then bishop to a5. Uh, your rook is pinned, and you'll probably lose it. You can play d6, and after queen to e6, b4, but now simply bishop to b6, bishop to d4 is a threat, bishop to d5 or bishop to e4 maybe in some variations, and now black is the one who is on the attack. So definitely not a good situation for Tal. In the end, you shouldn't play rook to c3, but something like queen to c3, but here, uh, yeah, black needs to do one thing, uh, just continue with the game and uh, it will be a better situation. You shouldn't capture immediately because of queen to c6 and now the queen, the rook will fall on a4. So first, for example, rook to e4, moving it out of the way and then only then you can capture on c6. So yeah, uh, this was a possibility, but we saw actually bishop to c7. And this allowed first rook to f6, 
and after bishop to d8 now rook to c6 not allowing queen to e7 and now tal is good once again and here after missing the chance actually nivergeld uh, made a terrible blunder he played e4 obviously this pawn was attacked and uh, the best way how to defend it was rook to e8 simply including the rook into the game since the whole game he was just simply standing on h8 and uh, yeah you're defending the pawn and you need to improve your pieces uh, of course white will continue with the attack but then simply rook to b3 queen to d7 and uh, the game is going on uh, but here we saw a e4 and this is a blunder for one simple reason first rook to b3 attacking the the queen and after the queen moves so for example to d7 or something like that you have queen to c3 and as you can see after e4 the queen is attacking on this diagonal the rook and not just that uh, the rook and the queen make a nice battery and they are attacking the bishop two times and black will lose one of the pieces so in the end it will be a lost game with this attack going on so uh, here because of that um, after rook to b3 we saw bishop to a5 attacking the queen but Tal simply played queen to e3 and now the game continues queen to a7 going for the queen exchange and now one last final Tal move was played queen to h6 I'll just uh, give you a moment to appreciate the beauty of this queen sacrifice if of course rook captures on h6 then you have a rook captures on c8 queen covers and this will be checkmate in just a couple of moves um it, of course so this is why you cannot capture here in the game was played rook to d8 was played and now we have bishop captures on a6 uh tal is just piling up now on the c8 uh bishop and uh, this is why you cannot really do much about it uh, here bishop to do d2 was played attacking the queen queen of course cannot capture the the, the bishop because then rook captures on a6 and there is nothing left of the attack you still have to keep the pressure queen to f6 attacking the rook here queen to d7 was played and after bishop to c8 nivergeld resigned the game and why did he resign uh, okay if you capture with the queen then you simply lose the queen after rook to c8 and uh, let me just show you quickly queen to b7 uh here queen yeah queen to f7 with queen to b7 threats of checkmate yeah it isn't a good situation here for for black so this is why you shouldn't play this and if you capture with the rook uh, then you have rook to a6 check uh, if you uh, do this then queen has to capture uh, cover and this is checkmate in a couple of moves so you shouldn't do it uh, if you don't if you cover with the queen then you simply lose the queen and uh, d6 is played and d6 with the idea that e3 isn't possible because of queen to f3 so now just simply this and uh, checkmate uh so first because of that not because of pushing d7 and if rook sorry and if set of e3 rook actually goes to um a d7 then queen to f1 first threatening queen to a6 so for example rook to d6 defending and now queen to b5 now the threat of uh, queen to b7 is unstoppable whatever you do or queen to b8 this will be checkmate so yeah uh, this is pretty much it uh, a very nice win by tal uh, again with that uh, let me just quickly show uh, this queen to h6 move was a, a definite great move and also the whole thing with the sacrifice of the knight and going for the rook attack a very bold idea and a very nice game so in 1959 tal was in his prime playing moves such as these and uh, yeah he made a lot of people famous for playing games like this against him so yeah, uh, this is pretty much it for this video. If you have some other tall game that you like or something like that, definitely suggest them in the comments down below. That being said, I would like to thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.